OK, and now briefly look what kind of modifications do you need. Look, first, you need to uh, replace lead screw. This is a lead screw to ball screw. And the key reason is that this spring mechanism, which should take uh, backlash out, uh, is not working under the load. So uh, when you're doing the milling, this uh, spring is too weak. It's by far too weak. Also, it has a little play. And normally such kind of uh, lead screw mechanism gives you about a hundred microns tolerance. 100 microns on the one axis, 100 microns on the second axis, and uh, 100 microns on a, on a spindle, you have 300 microns theoretical tolerance. So, and it is not sufficient. So you should replace it, uh, that uh, lead screw, to the ball screws. And since uh, all my design and requirements are Aiming tolerance, I choose a version when the ball screw is integrated into the motor. Uh, why it is important, there is no that uh, adapter shaft and uh, in, in a motor it is secured properly. If you use a shaft and shaft is keeping a lead screw or, or whatever you have, uh, then there in a motor uh, you have a spring mechanisms keeping bearings in a place and uh, it is not rigid enough. It also gives you an errors under the high torque. There is no way. You need a ball screw and then you should uh, secure that properly. Now, this is a perfect solution. Of course, there's a less flexibility because it is built in a motor, but it's a good motor and it's a good ball screw. It is a C7 rated ball screw. Uh, that means it is rated for 300 millimeters and uh, after after calibration, you can get almost perfect tolerance. Uh, it is uh, relatively easy. What is machine tolerance? Machine tolerance is uh, uh, 5 microns. Uh, it's sufficient tolerance for that. It's electronic tolerance. Uh, so um, there is no higher resolution steps. Then you need to add the micro steps. And if you add the micro steps, then you're losing torque. The most uh, complicated uh, part is this one you need to make adapter and uh, since i worked with uh, with already made components uh, from aliexpress it is hard to build by yourself those are really precise milled uh, components and uh, made in large volumes by some automated uh, system those are very very good in my case i need a little bit cut five millimeters here and five millimeters here some kind of and then it fits uh, perfectly in it uh, that modification is relatively easy i personally use the uh, defined uh, thickness materials and here is a plexiglass it's 20 millimeter plexiglass it perfectly fits in my in my project uh, and you need to make additional adapter to secure the uh, axis here in that case uh, when you make such kind of adapter you can use existing holes but you need a larger uh, larger uh, bearing at the end all this uh, all those plates and all those mechanical uh, cuts are done on on high tolerance equipment and methodology what i used was first i drilled there was a 10 millimeter hole i drilled a 12 millimeter hole secured that bearing in a way uh, that it fits in and then i drilled one pilot hole i put a thread uh, secured it and after uh, it was secured and 12 uh, and 12 millimeter bolt was in then i drilled another one uh, hole and uh, put a thread then i have a uh, precise bearing uh, places and then i drilled uh, 13 millimeters hole in the center that uh, only bearing defines where the ball screw are so also this uh, end is floating yeah you can freely can 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 move it uh, because with the temperature uh, ball screw is extending for microns yeah and with the uh, when, when it's colder then it's uh, shorter when it's uh, hot it is longer uh, there are some specs for the ball screws how straight they are and ball screw uh, with the lengths are not ideally straight it could be great it could be uh, ideally straight but it is not and then all this floating mechanism and bearing 
uh, compensates uh, all those uh, all those all those problems. So when this part is floating, that means all torque is kept by the motor and uh, those three millimeter screws. Torque provided by this ball screw and motor is really huge. I personally tested base and with a base. I can't stop it with one hand. I need a two hands and put a knee against the frame, and then with full force I can I can uh, stop it. So the torque provided is is really significant. Yeah. Also, you can see this part also is floating. Yeah. And it works smooth. The ball screw is not absolutely straight or perfectly straight, but it is pretty straight. I would say this uh, quality of this. Uh, China C7 uh, ball screw is uh, is fantastic. Also, you can see that uh, I bought a stock length and um, it is hardened steel. I was uh, afraid to cut it with some uh, abrasive uh, instruments uh, because uh, the temperature is rising and you can re really do some damage. But I'm using it just for for some adjustments if I need. Yeah, everything is. Crazy smooth, crazy smooth. Another thing which I mentioned I like for this uh, system that all electronics are uh, built uh, on a frame, that you have only two wires uh, going to outside, it's a mains. In my case it's here, I will improve it, but currently it is for a test. And a USB cable, you can easily move it from place to place and we put it on a, on a movable platform, yes, that uh, each engineer who needs to build a PCB, he can use it. Uh, here is 350 watt uh, high quality power supply, fanless with the heat sinks. Overall operation is really silent. Here is a spindle driver. Below, below you can you you can below you can see a relay, uh, which is driven from. Uh, the spindle output, so I have no electronics in, in between, only mechanical, and then switching on and off uh, spindle, uh, so it makes that uh, system crazy, crazy simple, crazy simple. One more important thing, uh, how you are wiring, so here uh, high current, high interference uh, signals are separated from the low current uh, sensor signals. And that gives uh, additional stability to the system. Uh, my system really operates uh, with interruption for four hours and, uh, and is uh, perfectly stable. How about Z axis? You can see here is my biggest disappointment um, in reality. And actually I put some effort even cut and adapt the adapter plate. And then I find out that those holes here those are not good. Yeah. I even replaced the bearings, no way to fix it. And when the hole is too high, there are two screws uh, kind of to secure them, but they are not able to withstand those vibrations. And uh, those gives additional 100 microns error and uh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Overall, well built, uh, nice in, in all aspects. Why not to make a one one item correct and then you have a good good Z axis. So unexpected costs. Now what I did, I saw you some uh, pattern and this is classical cl classical pattern. I bought the two components. I bought this block ready made. Uh, it has a high tolerance uh, block made on a really advanced equipment. And uh, then I bought uh, uh, 12 millimeter uh, linear rails and now it is perfect rock solid doesn't play and uh, I was uh, a bit lucky because those were a very good uh, and well priced uh, guides so sort of well hardened and doesn't play and smooth so all this X uh, uh, is those that axis is perfectly smooth and precise so this also is important this is why I am able to do those uh, 50 micron uh, depths, easy and, and, and precise. Uh, why I left uh, T8 uh, lead screw, uh, not a ball screw? With the ball screw there is uh, one problem. It is easy to move ball screw and only magnetic force is keeping that. 
Uh, it's not with a lead screw, and here I need a precise vertical position that under vibration it's not, not moving. So practically you can't use a ball screw with so small NEMA, uh, NEMA 17 motor, then you need a NEMA 23 motor if you want to really crunch uh, microns. Since there is significant weight, uh, there is no problem with the backlash because it always sits on a lower part of the thread. So in that uh, place, uh, lead screw is better than ball screw in some sense. At least you can get a higher torque and uh, no higher break, not the torque, yes. And uh, inside of this block, yeah, there is such, such mechanism and uh, I selected the good one mm. and uh, after after several tests I found it uh, excellent uh, from the tolerance. One more thing, since we are really crunching microns, there are two things. Uh, first, spindle. Spindles are made in a way that uh, design is uh, considering temperature. And the working temperature of the spindle is between 40 and uh, 50 degrees. So after some 10-15 minutes operation, they achieve that temperature and stay on that. And that means when they completely cold, uh, the lower bearing is uh, loose for uh, 50 or uh, even 100 microns. And when the temperature rises, it's, it doesn't play at all. That means before you start your, uh, your work, you should run for 10 minutes uh, warm up. And this is for all uh, high speed uh, spindles, so there is the same design because bearings inside they extend with a, with a temperature and you should count it. If you are really aiming for 10, 10 mils and 6 mils PCBs, you should uh, consider such things. Second, I want to make uh, dual side PCBs and uh, for that case uh, we decided that we standardize and work only with one, uh, one size material. We, we are working with 100 millimeters by 150 millimeters materials. Those are available in uh, AliExpress in China for a good price and practically each uh, such uh, piece uh, costs including shipment, shipment about uh, 50 cents. That each time when you do some, some work uh, we are using just uh, one piece and there is no cheaper cheaper solutions as, uh, as 50 cents. But not from the business perspective those costs are neglectable. Once we standardize at one size it gives uh, significant advantages and uh, the first thing uh, when you buy those uh, stock materials uh, 100 by 150 uh, those are uh, not precise uh, the deviation about uh, one millimeter so we have additional operation we have a template and on a cross so we are cutting to precise uh, size no, actually, uh, I can do 100 pieces uh, of such uh, adjustment in a half an hour. So those are not also, also costs, but you need a precise material. Uh, one more thing, when we are dealing with such a tolerances, uh, many, uh, or at a standard uh, fiberglass, it's not perfectly flat, it could be wrapped. Yeah. So if you look at it, it's not perfectly flat or wrapped. That means when you secure, you should secure in a way either with a, with a vacuum. Uh, in my case, we are securing with a screw surround. And then it is perfectly flat and well secured. Also, 50 microns is 50 microns. It's very small values. And flatness to the machine is achieved that we are making that flat bed with, uh, with a mill and then it's perfectly flat to the machine. Uh, those two parts are uh, made for uh, for your fingers, easy to take out, and also I'm putting probe for a contact for a PCB. Small things, but handy. Couple, couple uh, low lights. Uh, first, uh, with such pattern, because we want to do the double side, uh, uh, double side PCBs and. Uh, and the resolution is all system is uh, okay five microns plus 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 errors that means if you do even slight adjustment with the screws or something else you are losing that adjustment so first you should finish your machine set it completely set don't do any additional adjustments and then you mill the bed and uh, and there is a pilot holes to reverse the pcb and then you have a perfect precision. 
in a moment when you even release and tighten those those holes you should uh, you should make a new bed also i made uh, such a bed more than 10 and uh, i think three five years we have sufficient uh, sufficient material to to use it. You can see this, those holes are standardized. I'm, I'm making them on CNC machine, and that's it. So another advantage of standardization, but uh, those requirements for for tolerance are, are crazy, but those are achievable if you do the process uh, in a right way. Okay, and now. Uh, for those who want to uh, do a milling job with this machine, uh, can you do? Yes, you can, but you should do extra modifications. And one of the modifications what you should do is with uh, those uh, round shafts. Way how they are made uh, here, those are 12 millimeter shafts secured on a thin material uh, with a one screw. And this is like a guitar strings. Guitar strings are vibrating, and when you do real, real milling, and especially if you do um, aluminium milling, all those uh, shafts will, will vibrate and you can get a tolerance. Mm, the easiest way to fix it is put another extruded uh, profile, the same 40 by 40 here. Yeah, I have uh, four holes. Put a linear guides on top of that and then make an uh, adapter in the middle then you will have a perfect machine and you can mill aluminium as well uh, those side walls are uh, pretty strong you can reinforce but uh, this is not a weak point weak point are those guitar strings the bed bed vibration and for aluminium milling uh, probably my design of uh, of uh, z-axis may not be strong enough you need a stronger profile here but who knows? You should you should test. You should test. It's actually crazy strong. It was so good. Uh, and summarizing, I would say for a four hundred money and modification, uh, the total cost of the project is about eight hundred uh, euros. And if you put even here additional uh, additional reinforcement, uh, you have decent machine. And in this side, there is no practically alternatives for that. And you can do serious works, even even semi-professional. If you do the professional, uh, I don't know, 45 by 7, then you should also uh, replace uh, those cheap, cheap linear guides. So also wear out. But for our, our, our load, 10 PCBs per month, it's in, it, is, it has infinite resource. Uh, I can honestly say you are not able to buy such quality machine uh, in a market for uh, for a thousand. The nearest price is about a two and three. I think and the three is a closer than two. So, but uh, small modifications and excellent result. Actually, the result exceeded my expectations, uh, what I thought it's possible.